the garage with the Roadster, a cup of coffee in hand, and yet again, the Roadster's broken. In my previous video, um, I had an oil leak, which was fixed by changing various pipes, um, putting in a new PCV valve, um, and that seemed to remedy it. Uh, no oil leak. The car drove about 300 miles, no problems, and then on its last outing, the car started firing on three, uh, two cylinders, not three, <laughs> two cylinders. Um, after running some diagnostics uh, with the OBD2, it pointed towards cylinder one, and it was actually saying the uh, fuel uh, injector for cylinder one uh, was not working. But before I started or wanted to look at injector one, I decided to strip everything back down again, look at everything that I've changed, so the coil packs, HT leads, and start investigating if I uh, had, had caused the, uh, the problem. So I put the coil pack on for um, cylinder one, HT leads back on, check that to see if that fixed it, it didn't. In the end I took out the spark plugs, they were quite coked up so I gave them a, a good clean, put them back in tried that again the car was still firing on two cylinders with the same error codes so in the end I stuck a bore scope down in to have a little look to see what I could find in the actual um, cylinder I can probably put a video on now to show you what that looked like as you can see from the video there's some white sludge on top of piston one which has got me a bit worried um, so today the plan is to run a head gasket sniff test on the uh, engine to see if I've got head gasket failure. Um, so I might have a few issues, so it might be um, uh, fuel injector as well as head gasket failure. So the plan today is to do the sniff test, do a compression test to make sure all three cylinders are okay. And then finally, again, look at the other two cylinders to see if they also have the white uh, sort of sludgy stuff on it. Um, I have had a oil leak so and I've not had a PCV valve working properly so it could be that oil has just made its way into the um, through, through the inlet into the cylinder and because there's no fuel coming in it could be that I'm hoping it is that worst case I'm gonna have to um, strip the engine uh, down to get to the cylinder head check piston rings potentially if there's no compression so today could either be a good day or bad day so what I've done is I've brought in a good friend of mine Darren hello say hi Darren hi Darren how you doing <laughs> so Darren's going to be giving me a hand today so we're going to sniff test compression test look at the other two cylinders and then hopefully have a diagnosis of what the next steps are so I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it's just the injector i can get those off sent them off uh, get them sent off to be refurbished if it is that so um, hopefully in the next few minutes on youtube anyway we'll find out or we'll have a better idea of what the next steps are so um let's see what happens darren has kindly removed the spark plugs from all three cylinders so we knew we had an issue with cylinder one we've not put the scope down just yet so we'll do that in a bit but uh, Darren noticed in cylinder two, there was some nasty, horrible stuff down there. Do you have, do you have what it was just then? It's it? it some was... sort of weird, matted amalgamation of fibres and, but it, it was actually inside the cylinder, I could see it. So I pulled, managed to pull it a little bit out. Don't know what it is, but it's, it's general crap, basically. How's that getting in there? Well, that's the question. So we'll have to uh, have a look inside and see how much is in there um, and then give it a clear up around it and then number three we'll have a look inside number three have we not gone down into it yet? Oh well with the bore scope? Yeah yeah with the bore scope yeah yeah okay have a look um, inside okay so yeah we'll stick the bore scope down there have a little look uh, not good but you were also mentioning Darren that uh, my oh the cam covers cam covers leaking leaking so that's going to need to be changed as well. Um, so yeah, yeah. It's probably just keep the problems coming. Um, sit rep. Um, we've looked at cylinder one, cylinder two, and uh, they look okay. There's no white residue on either of the two pistons, so it only seems to be on cylinder one. Um, 
we were going to do a compression test but we need the right adapter the spark plugs on here are 12 mil and ours only goes to 14 mil so we need an adapter uh, which, which we'll is get, at home yeah we'll get that for another day so next uh, the only other thing we can do is a sniff test got our head gasket kit and we're ready to go so this is what i bought off ebay hopefully it'll do the trick so just to give you an idea of the test that we're performing so this little thing here the yellow one goes on top of the coolant expansion bottle we then put in two mil two mil of this blue solution into here um, actually I should have started off that you need to have the engine warm first before doing this so once the engines warmed up and the coolant has got a warmer temperature as I say this goes on with two mil with the blue coolant in there um, and you let it run for a while and what you're looking for is for this blue uh, kind of dye to change colour. So the colours we're looking out for for this test, if it goes yellow, we're in the sticky stuff and that means I've got a head gasket failure. If it stays blue, that means there, there's no combustion leak uh, present, so that is a Brucey bonus. And if it goes green, it's the, it means the test invalid and that could be for a number of reasons that could be because the uh, temperature's uh, is too high or i've been doing the test for too long so um, i think it recommends running the test for no more than five minutes so five minutes is the maximum so what we'll do is we'll get two mil of the blue coolant into there get it onto the expansion tank and keep our fingers crossed that it stays blue so um, let's see how it looks And the test kit is blue. Not pregnant. No, it's not pregnant. <laughs> and it's a good indicator. So that means the head gasket, based on this, hasn't failed. So the main A is on top of, uh, you know, in cylinder one on, on piston number one, is probably caused by the injector failing. And we know due to the PCV valve that. I've probably got still quite a bit of oil circulating around uh, the engine, so um, I'm hoping that's the cause. So next steps, at some point. Next step will be strip off the inlet manifold, get to the injectors, take the injectors out. Yep. Um, get them reconditioned, which is always a good thing in that mileage anyway, for what it costs. Yeah. We're still going to do a compression test just for curiosity. Once we've got the adapter. Once we've got the, once we've got the adapter, um, just to see the health of. The, you know the, the health of the engine really yeah it's not going to do any harm and as i said earlier in the video that the car's done 96,000 miles uh it's a decent example um and things like this are going to need to be done anyway so those injectors are probably original so there's no surprise that they're starting to feel a bit worn at this point yeah. so yeah if we get them sent off uh hopefully that should wouldn't take too long it's only a day or two turn around yeah and then it'd be nice to do a video of me actually driving the car so I'm hoping this is the last hiccup, but who knows with these types of cars. It's um, all a learning curve, it's all good fun. It's all good fun. And we'll you'll probably join us on the next video of getting the actually you no know, what I'll do is I won't video the injectors coming out. We'll get them off, send them off, and then my next video will be getting them back in the car and hopefully enjoying the car. So um, but yeah, I'll keep you all posted. Tune around. Well, basically, this has got to be the hot head's got to go for reconditioning. Mm -hmm.